Hi, welcome back. Now, in earlier tutorials, we talked about quantitative and qualitative research studies. And those discussions were pretty well focused on what to do after you've decided to take on a qualitative or quantitative approach. But what if you haven't decided yet? How do you decide? This is a really common reason that we are called upon to provide consulting for dissertation research. So to help clarify factors involved in this decision, I'm going to explain in this video how you might use your research gap to pick an approach. Then we're going to spend a lot more time talking about situations where you decide that maybe doing both would be ideal. That's called a mixed method study. And as you might think, they're wonderfully comprehensive. Let's consider an example of a research gap that we might approach from either a quantitative or qualitative analysis angle. For example, let's say that the research literature is unclear on how moral reasoning relates to bullying in the workplace. So there are lessons to be learned from examining the statistical relationships between moral reasoning levels and the perpetration of bullying in the workplace. Also, we could explore workers' perceptions of how different levels of moral reasoning seem to tie in with bullying behaviours they've experienced at work. As such, we could easily take this study in a quantitative or qualitative direction. Now, this is the type of research gap that might leave you wondering, should I do qualitative, quantitative, or maybe mixed methods? Well, there are advantages to each type of approach, which can make it difficult to decide. It will definitely help to plan your dissertation approach mindfully at this point by thinking through this question a little bit more deeply. So let's first talk about each quantitative and qualitative research studies. Each has very specific advantages and disadvantages, and each approaches research differently, hence the term approaches. The first way in which they're different is where they place focus. As discussed in the qualitative methods video for qualitative research studies, they're largely concerned with phenomena, such as the implementation of anti-bullying programs or therapy for first responders experiencing secondary trauma. So these are things that people might participate in or experience, and their perspectives and interpretations of these experiences. Of course, it's possible for these to be part of quantitative studies, but they look different. Specifically, these become quantitative when themselves or something related to them are measured numerically or in objective terms, such as the period before implementation of the anti-bullying programme and the period after implementation, where you have two possibilities, before and after, and then subjected to statistical analysis. For secondary trauma, it might be a burnout amongst therapists doing this work, or perhaps it's PTSD symptomology, as in the first responders receiving a therapeutic intervention. All of these can be measured numerically, and in some cases with survey instruments that have already been developed. In this way, they're variables. In providing dissertation help to hundreds of clients, we've seen a number of instruments. You might be surprised by the constructs and contexts addressed by these research tools. Because qualitative and quantitative studies are focused differently, they also proceed differently. They engage in analysis in opposite directions, actually. So let's stick to our quantitative examples for just a moment because they start with a sense of those clearly defined variables. They're usually deductive in nature. And that is that they start with the conclusions, which are the things they hypothesize are true. They then move to determine if these hypotheses can be confirmed with statistical analysis. So in a dissertation, they might test whether the implementation of an anti-bullying program helped to reduce referral rates or reduce levels of reported victimization amongst students. They could test whether a specific therapeutic intervention reduced PTSD symptomology for the first responders. Qualitative research, on the other hand, has no idea what's there. At least it has no idea before it starts. So in contrast to quantitative studies, Qualitative ones are looking simply 
for what is there. They don't know anything about the implementation of the anti-bullying programme, but they may want to know how it went for teachers. For example, how fully they felt it was implemented, what challenges accompanied that implementation, and how students responded. In this way, qualitative research moves inductively, starting with the phenomenon itself as expressed through data such as interviews, focus groups, observations, etc, etc. Then they move to those general conclusions, only as a result of the investigation, not in advance. So in terms of qualitative analysis, looking for what is there can be quite difficult. And that's definitely the case when you consider the complexity of multi-step qualitative analysis protocols. We're one of only a few, if not the only companies that provide comprehensive assistance with all of the qualitative methodology and analysis. It's hard to find qualitative data to analyze that is just there in the same way that you can for quantitative study in certain fields. Primary data collection is a concern then, and you'll see above that qualitative studies often engage much more with generally with people's perceptions and experiences. It can do this in a couple of different ways, but in the end result, in either case, is that it uses much more specific data collection methods than quantitative studies. So interviews, questionnaires, focus groups, observations, and document analysis are especially common forms, as they all help to better understand people's thoughts and experiences. Because quantitative studies move deductively and with predefined constructs or variables, they often require instruments that validly and reliably measure those variables. This provides its own challenges, and talking with a statistician or consultant to walk through these statistical concerns can be really, really helpful to you. That's because even though it sounds as though decisions make themselves here, it's often that your committee members have very specific ideas of their own. Because of our consulting experience with so many universities, especially the major online ones, we can help you work within those expectations that are part of the dissertation process at each school. We can also provide assistance to point the way forward through your quantitative research. <laughs> okay, so now for mixed methods. What if you were light on a focus for your study and it seems like neither option is really complete as it is? Perhaps you'd like to know what people think about a particular issue, but you'd like to fully understand the nature of that issue first. Or maybe you'd like to figure out some of the problems or benefits that are a part of the phenomenon and then test those specific elements more rigorously. This is where a mixed method study can be ideal, and it's often an appropriate choice for an investigation that it provides a more robust set of conclusions that could be possible with just one design on its own. That's because it can focus on both variables and phenomena, move both deductively and inductively, and then with both interviews and survey instruments. Now, a mixed method study won't always be the answer, but in situations where there are benefits to both qualitative and quantitative studies, mixed methods can help you take advantage of those benefits in your research. In these cases, the qualitative and quantitative parts of your dissertation help together to answer your research questions. So, if you're thinking about setting up a mixed method study, but you're not really sure how to go about doing this, or even if it's a good idea for your dissertation, that's where we can help you make the decision wisely by thinking through all the pros and cons of using this approach. We can assist you in a variety of ways to help plan out this very complex form of research. And we also know how challenging it can be to gain approval for mixed method studies with your committee too. These types of studies are so complicated that you can expect to put in loads of efforts to achieve approval. And that's where I think you'll see how valuable and helpful our unlimited revisions are. You can count on us to stick with you as you work towards approval of your proposal based on a mixed methods design. And we can also help with your dissertation when it comes for analysis. But more on that later. Within mixed methods, there are two central designs that determine how the qualitative and quantitative arms are the study that fits together. Parallel 
Parallel convergence studies are those where you collect your qualitative and quantitative data independently and at the same time in your study. Consider the example of the therapeutic intervention for the treatment of PTSD symptoms in first responders. Perhaps you want to examine the treatment outcomes of a particular therapeutic modality using a PTSD symptom survey and also through interviews with first responders experiencing these symptoms. In a parallel convergent mixed method study, you would obtain permission for the use of a survey instrument and also develop an interview guide about the treatment experiences at the outset of your study. Then your participants would complete the surveys before and after treatment and participate in interviews following treatment. You would then analyse the quantitative and qualitative data separately, but then compare the results of the analysis to examine how the different sets of findings complement, explain or contradict what was found in the other form of data. The explanatory sequential mixed methods approach, however, sequences your quantitative and qualitative data collection in such a way that allows one phase of data collection to inform the next. This can either place the qualitative or quantitative phase of the study first, depending upon your overall aims. So indeed, in our work as dissertation consultants, we've seen quite similar studies conducted each way. So let's consider the above example again. Now, if you were interested in developing a new PTSD instrument that was specifically designed for first responders, you would likely begin with a qualitative analysis phase. Your interviews with first responders would sensitize you to issues that might be used to develop survey items for PTSD symptoms that are more relevant to this group of individuals. This qualitative data collection would then feed into quantitative phase, in which you conduct statistical analysis to validate the new survey instrument. On the other hand, you might approach such a study from a quantitative stance first. By evaluating first responders' responsiveness to specific therapeutic treatment modality. Then, if you are using an explanatory sequential approach, you might identify those rare participants who are non responsive to the therapy and then develop an interview protocol to further explore the possible reasons for their poorer outcomes. Now, as you can see, the first outcomes of the first phase in a sequential approach directly influence data collection in the next phase which sets these studies apart from those with convergent designs. So now, let's back up a little and talk about the first research gap I discussed in this video and see how we might move on from there. It would be really nice to explore managers' and employees' experiences with bullying in the workplace to discover how they interpret these as relating to moral reasoning. And it would also be really nice to conduct a correlational study for your dissertation to help investigate how different scores on a moral reasoning instrument relate to the perpetuation of bullying. So, in this way, a mixed methods approach might actually be perfect. As you can see with the interviews with the people about their thoughts and interpretations, this might be helpful in explaining or illuminating any statistical relationships we see between moral reasoning and bullying. We'll just need to select a design based on how we plan to get to the most of the two arms of our study. In this case, we would need to decide if collecting both forms of data would be doable in one shot, or if it would be important to have participants complete one form such as the surveys first, and then decide on a direction for your qualitative interviews. Again, it's often that for your dissertation, both are possible. It helps to always think here with your end goals in mind. One thing I should mention here is that while you might have ideas about what would be ideal, so chairs and methodologists on your committee often do too. And with our huge amount of experience with the major online universities, we can definitely help to navigate through their tough standards for setting up a mixed methods dissertation or thesis. And I'll also note that with dissertation research, you might consider the potential IRB challenges of sequential explanatory design as these involve proposing two rounds of data collection with the subsequent round dependent on the outcomes of the first one. See our IRB video for more information on this. Now, if this is your design of choice, however, 
we can certainly help you to put this together and we'll stick with you to ensure it is approved all the way through the final dissertation editing. Because of this commitment, revisions are the name of the game. When we help with our projects, we include revisions at no additional charge, straight to approval. For many other studies though, a parallel convergent mixed methods design would be better. And that might be the case for your study. We'd love to talk about your dissertation with you and please know that you can call or email anytime for help here. We can help you sort through the many decisions. First, if a mixed methods approach might be best and then what design would be ideal for your study. As I'm sure you can see at this point, conducting a mixed methods study can be very rewarding and it can provide you with a wealth of data that will support multiple research article submissions once you graduate. But it is truly like conducting two studies in one and it can be a time consuming and extremely challenging process. But with our solid grounding in all things quantitative as well as our specialisation in qualitative research, we can most certainly assist in development of mixed methods studies that will be sure to impress and you can really be proud to call your own. Thanks so much for watching.